This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Hello, this is Mess Mikkelsen from Star Wars Rogue One, and you are listening to Bruce and Blasters. Here we go. You're listening to Bruise and Blasters. The Star Wars party starts now. How are we doing? Same as always. That bad, huh? Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blast here at your side, kid. Let us go inside where we can discuss business over a drink. Did you join us for a little refreshment? Everyone's invited, of course. With Chris Salton and Joe Savano, two guys from Boston, who were talking about this stuff anyway. Let him let him marinate with like a good steak tip. Oh yeah. And Renegades. We're having a nice time. We just got a cup of super cold. Zippy sip. Yes. We had a barbecue. Society. Okay, start with the guy. With the guy. Just change, just change. On this episode of Brews and Blasters, a small town teen is thrown back to the 50s of an experiment by his eccentric scientist friend goes awry. Traveling through time in a modified DeLorean, he encounters young versions of his parents, must make sure they fall in love or else cease to exist. Even more dauntingly, he has to be- go back to the future to save the life of his friend, the Doc. more elaborate every time every time every single time hello <laughs> hello hello welcome back guys you know the show it's bruising blasters you found it the heat's on <laughs> welcome perfect timing chris is in a blanket <laughs> maybe it's cold outside right now it's cold yeah it's getting cold. yeah man. we're getting new england winters here i don't so, like it no i don't like it either but we got a little, little hum of the hum of the heaters going on right now yeah all right, we're gonna we're gonna cozy up here. It gets uh hotter every year. <laughs> it really does. Maybe maybe we're getting older, like it's getting colder. I yeah, don't that, know what's happening. It, it's so funny because when you're younger, you're like, yeah, snow, cold, whatever. Yeah. And now you get older and you're like, no. Yeah. So you hear that in the background? That's that's just the cold. Yeah. That's all it that's is. That's the but cold, yeah. baby. That's it. We're just we're just gonna we're just gonna curl up here by the fire. <laughs> Bruising blasters. Late night. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> my name is Joe Tivano. Joining me as always, my good friend, Christopher Salton. Hello. Hello. What's up, kid? All right. Uh, you know, same old. How's same Clark, old, the, how's Clark the Hut doing? B- busy. Busy. Um, Very busy. We, you know, we got that uh, brand spanking new wave of unbelievable figures that we will Whoa. be talking about uh, we're, we're, later on. We're not going to be talking about it. We're going to be smashing them up. I'm going to yeah. destroy those things. Yeah. Well, not the figures. The, the packaging. I'm going to rip. I'm going to shred it. I can't wait. It just doesn't even exist when you're done with I'm it. I'm going to get my claws into that shred, in the, into that packaging. I'm going to tear it apart. <laughs> It'll cease to exist. Savage animal. Slice and dice. Shake and bake. Shake and bake, yeah. Make it happen. 
Okay, wow. Well, where, what are we doing? Way off track. This is it that you found it. This is the Star Wars party. We're having a good time, even though we're freezing to death here. Uh, we're often imitated. We're never duplicated. And thank you for being here. If this is your first time partying with us, we hope you have a good time. Yeah, party on. Yeah, grab a brew, whatever it might be. Grab a blast. Have a good, let's have a good time. I need to know, though, right now, before we do anything else, when the Star Wars party begins. I would say right about now. All right, that's good. Not bad. We're off to a good start. I feel like we're doing great. We can't promise anything. No, we, we never have. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Chris, Star Wars Resistance. Star Wars Resistance. We haven't talked about it in a couple of weeks. We, it, we've been very busy boys. Yeah. We have been. There's been a lot going on between Red Island Comic Con, between The Mandalorian, between... You know, the new Diego Luna Cassian Andor show. We've we've not really been talking about resistance and it's been going on. It's been happening. It's been happening. We've been watching it. Yes, we have. Um and we're gonna get back to it. We're gonna be doing um you know our 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 recaps of each show and we're gonna get into it. We have we have we're gonna do two today. Um and I'm sure you listen to other shows that have done much deeper dives into it, but we want to give you our highlights. We want to give you the recaps of what we, the things we found very interesting with the show, and go through them because it's it's a show worth watching and worth paying attention to. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say this: I had, I had made some comments about the animation early on, yeah. and I think they hit their stride with about the third or fourth episode. Oh, okay. Um, I feel like a lot of the things I was paying attention to that were kind of like. Maybe not perfect in my eyes. They've all kind of smoothed out. Maybe it's me getting used to it. Maybe it's the animation just kind of taking that next step up. Mm-hmm. But I'm 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 digging it now. I'm digging the animation a lot. I'm liking it. So there you go. Yeah, I mean the animation's pretty <clears throat> solid. You know, um, I didn't see any change. Um, like you said, like uh, you don't know if maybe you are getting used to it or whatever. Yeah, maybe I am. Yeah, I think the same here because when they first hit it, you know, hit us with that. Yep. I was like, wow, this looks really different. But now that I keep seeing it, I'm like, this, well, I, th- this is normal. I feel you like know? they're subtly adding detail in where they need to and taking away when they when they don't. And it's just it's just working right now. I feel like it's by the time I got to fuel for the fire, it's just hitting on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, this actually looks the way I want it to look. It looks good. By the time we get to the high tower, I'm like, this is a beautiful show. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really nice features, yeah. you know, with the animation that's that's going on with the show. Yeah. Um, you know, that we're very happy with. Yeah, exactly. Um, I will say still, though, that my one big complaint is they don't need to try so hard to make it cartoony. Yeah. It, it doesn't need that. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I, I'm having a real good time with this show. So we're going to be catching up with over the next few weeks with every single episode, and we're going to go through them all. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's get into it. You want to get into it right now? Let's, yeah. let's talk about Fuel for the Fire a little bit, okay? All right. Fuel for the Fire. I don't think you realize this at first, but Elijah Wood actually guest starred in this episode. Yeah, I did not know that until you told me. Yeah, really cool, right? That's super cool, yeah. Yeah, I dug that. Um, Chase Rucklin. Interesting character. What'd you think of him? Well, uh, y- you know, uh, kind of like, uh, like you know, he was trying to play Kaz. A little. He's a punk. Is he? Is he? Is he the real deal though? Like, is he really? Is he a con artist, or does he actually want to be like another ace pilot, just like Kaz does? Pro- I think. Th- I think they all want to. Yeah, they're all. You know, kinda, I, th- yeah. I think that's the goal. But they're <sighs> they're willing to, you know, you know, sacrifice. To become on top, you know, like uh, I he, hear what he, you're had, he had Kaz do the dirty work, but it didn't really play out that well. Yeah. Okay. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So his team's there just trying to claw their way to the top any way they can. Yeah. And they kind of used Kaz in this episode. Yeah. He was just a pawn. Yeah. A little bit. But you know, it's funny. Like, Kaz didn't see it that way. He's like, oh, yeah, he's my friend. I'm going to save him. It wasn't like. It was a little gullible because he just kind of met him. Yeah. He kind of met him. He's like, oh, my God, I have to save your life. And then, like, in repayment for literally saving the guy's life, he's like, "This ain't over, Kaz." Yeah, I'm like, whoa! Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Like, he just saved your life. Yeah. Like, what, what are you? What are you even talking about? Um. So I don't like Jace Ruckler. <laughs> I got to be honest. Yeah, it's just a, a, another person that you can't trust. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, it's not great. I like the uh, I like the nine numb on his on his uh, team. Yeah, he was cool. He's he, you know speaking English too, not just like speaking like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty cool to uh, to hear him kind of just have like a, a cool little accent and just kind of hanging out. So I dug that a, a, quite a bit. Well, we said that uh, like a million times over. Uh, one of the things that we like the most about the show, he's a Celestin. Yeah, that's right. Um, that you see a lot of familiar faces. Yeah, it's great. They're really working that hard, and mm-hmm. I love that. Um, we learn a lot about Yeager's backstory as well. Right, yeah, which is really cool, and what kind of person he is. I mean, it seems like Yeager's a guy who has a soft spot for like wayward souls. Yeah, like his whole his whole team is full of lost people. Yeah. So yeah, what were you gonna say? It was just really cool to see that picture of him with, with the X-wing suit mm-hmm. with like other, like fellow pilots. You know that it was just really cool to see that. And like, seems like everyone on Colossus Station is like, "Whoa, yeah, Yeager, Yeager can throw down. He yeah. can fly. He saw some stuff. Yeah, he he can fly. Like, yeah. we don't even mess with him. You know, he'll fly when he wants to fly because when he does, it's legit. Right, right, right. It, it, it's like one of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, and like everyone he he takes in is like all wayward souls. Like Niku doesn't seem like. It's like no one likes him at all. Like, yeah, you know they're all. He makes everyone uncomfortable, and like no one really wants anything to do with Niku, and uh, which kind of makes me feel bad because he's so innocent. He you know is innocent. I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you have like a uh, like Tam, Rivora, mm-hmm. and like yeah, she just kind of seems lost too. You know, you find a little bit more about her in the the next episode, the High Tower, where where she's coming from. So I don't know. And uh, even like Kaz, totally he he allows he allows people to steal. From Yeager, and he pretty much takes advantage of him, and and is really Cas is a very lost soul in a lot of his own ways. Even though he comes from a rich background and um, has all this training and whatnot, he's still lost. He has no idea what he's doing and why he's doing it. It would be really interesting to find out like who his dad is, and it was uh, like when he called him up, and he was like, "Oh, I'm not helping you again." So it was like you said, mm. like you know, is he a rich guy? You know, um, he's right. a senator's son, right? So he's like. You know he's 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 that kid. He's that kid. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's that kid. The rich kid. Yeah. But maybe he needs to still make it on his own. Right. That's kind of where he is. Yeah. Maybe it was just one of those things like he was spoiled throughout like his whole life and then he became like rebellious. You know, it's yeah. like I'm gonna go do my own thing now. He's a great pilot, but doesn't really know why. He's, you know, maybe he's he he needs to find his own core values. He needs to find his way on his own. Yeah. And that's kind of what where we have him on the Colossus, and that's why he's screwing up so much. He's not a, he's not really. Really know how to do anything. They don't really know how to get the job done. Right. And uh that's interesting. Uh a little more worry, Yeager too. I mean, he was at Jakku. Uh we mm-hmm. see a picture of his family on Batu. Yep. Which is gonna be, you know, Disney Park. It's gonna be Galaxy's Edge. Uh, which Black, is really cool Black that Black Station. I don't I don't know who pointed that out, but it was like the the mountains in the background yeah. and then the picture, and I was like, wow, I would have never put that together. Weaving weaving that in, just yeah. cross stitching that right into the fabric of Star Wars yep. right now. Black Sparrow is uh taken it's uh, it's been in a couple of novels. I mean, it's been mentioned quite a bit lately. You gotta Which, love it. Yeah, I I love how they weave in that right in. Um, okay. Uh, the third thing I want to talk about that creepy alien Nancy's bar. You can live with me. Do you remember that? Uh, uh, I I I can't I can't put my mind on it right now. It's just um, a weird. Yeah, I don't want to put my my, my mind on it either. It's like it was just this creepy, creepy old alien guy. He reminded me of like the uh, Jasper from Family Guy, the old, the old, oh, the old no. guy. He really did. He was so creepy. Oh, uh, because like Cass was like, "Where can I live?" And he, maybe I shouldn't be living with Yeager. And he's like, "You can live with me." And like, ugh, <laughs> uh, what? What? Oh, man, I don't know why what? I can't remember that. It was just really creepy and. It was just so out of context for the show, mm-hmm. which has been so geared towards younger kids. And like, I did don't, that I don't conversation know. like end there? Was yeah. it like no? Yeah, it, it it was. It was like yeah, no. Like <laughs> literally, I think Cas. That's what Cas said. He was like, yeah, no. Uh, so I don't know. I don't. I don't really get it. Um. You know, the cool thing with this episode, the uh, the concept art of the speeder bike from Return of the Jedi made his yes. made his appearance again. Yeah, that was cool. Love that. Um. They're, they're they're still. St- I, I thought that they got all the concept art out in Rebels. Oh no way! No way! They're still recycling. They're, there's just so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, as I said, the animation's really coming together. I noticed it a lot in this episode. It's looking amazing. The sound design as well. 
Um, the score is really great. It's calling back to like the OT mm-hmm. quite a bit. I'm noticing a lot of a lot of themes being like reused and recycled and and riffed on quite a bit. So I, I'm digging that a lot. And the sound itself just sounds good. It just it's really really stood out quite a bit in this episode. Uh, last thing, um, they they gotta stop trying so hard with the sneaking yeah. and the lines like "get ready to be impressed" and and just all this like boasting and hey, just stop trying so hard to yeah. be a kid show. It, it it it's it's already catering to ch- catering to children. I, I think I hope as the series moves forward, they they kind of lay that stuff to the wayside and really start to dig into the characters and you know keep it light, keep it fun, but not try so hard yeah well i mean that that's the thing like there's tiptoeing around and then there's tiptoeing yeah. around ding, 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 ding. yeah like, like, like we don't need the yeah. scooby-doo stuff you know yeah, exactly exactly star wars doesn't need that it's already doing well all right let's move on to the high tower okay uh i like this episode a lot i thought there was a, a lot of meat on the bone with this one too because mm-hmm. they finally understand a little bit more about Colossus Station, what's really going on? Right. Why the ace pilots are there, what they actually do in the middle between racing and why they actually are supported mm-hmm. by the, that station itself, why they get to live in the digs they live in. Because they're 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 acting act as security, they act as escorts, they act as um the kind of the, the Colossus own little mini air force. Yes. Which yep. is cool. So it, it it makes a lot of sense they would be treated so well. You also learn a lot about Captain Doza as well. Um, the type of person he is. The tough as nails as well. Um, it's funny. Uh, you know, you find, Kaz suspects him of being the mole at mm-hmm. the station, but it's not. He right. could, could be anything further from the, from the truth. Doesn't even know Kaz and covers for him on, uh, on his daughter's recommendation, mm-hmm. which is cool. That scene with Kaz and Tora too. How funny was that? Yeah, it was funny. He's like, oh no, you're just you're just a friend. Right, 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 <laughs> friends, right, right. Friend zoned immediately. Yep. Yeah. It, it was really cool. Like I, I know that they didn't get quite into all the pilots just yet, but it was cool just to see them. Yeah. You know, it, like the Steve Stannon character mm-hmm. and like that Plo Koon uh species. The Plo character. Koon guy. Yeah, yeah. Um you know, stuff like that. It was cool. It was cool to see them get a get a reminder mm-hmm. of them a little more. Uh, I yeah, there, there was quite a bit there. A lot of Easter eggs in Toradoza's uh, yes, yep, uh, her quarters as well. There was there was quite a bit. I know what you're getting at. There, there's a lot to get at. Yeah, I'm talking with Drooping McCool, my friend. Did you, mm-hmm. did you see the the stuffed animals? I did. And yeah. uh, did you see the the um, Sabine? Uh, run symbol there, the spray yes, paint. Yeah. Yes, I did. I saw everything. She like has been collecting everything. Mm. It seems like so. There's uh, some uh, some pretty cool stuff to party. Yeah, you know, I was I was reading a comic with, with Drew McCool in it, a, a, a recent one from Star Wars Adventures. And does Drew McCool not have any arms? Yeah, he has arms because he's the one that's playing like the, the like the flute, the blue guy. No, that's Max Rebo. I'm talking about Max Rebo. Oh, you know, this was this is really interesting because like I don't know if it's like a fact, but yeah. um does Max Rebo not have arms? He has arms, but I, I think like he wasn't supposed to have legs or something like that. Like, I'm reading the Star Wars Adventures comic. And Max Rebo is just like a blob with legs, no arms. So when he's playing the piano, that's actually his legs? Uh I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at at this, and that's those aren't legs. Those are those are arms, right? But I'm looking at the comic. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, I I don't know. I I don't understand why this comic put them with no arms. It it didn't make any sense. It was it was literally Max. It was Max Rebo, and like on an adventure on Tatooine, and he didn't have any arms. I don't understand. When I um. I, I attended a panel with Simon Williamson, yeah, the, the actor that played Max Rebo, and he said that you know there wasn't anything, you know, like when he was sitting there in costume, there was nothing, you know, below the waist type yeah. deal, and he always thought that that's how like you know that that character was, 
Uh-huh. And then he was like, oh, and then they came out with the action figure, and he was like, oh, I have legs. Hmm. You know, so, like, I, I, I don't know. Weird, right? Yeah. But then again, like, they probably just told them, like, the bare minimum. Yeah, like, like look, on, like, on he, set. you can see him, like, he has, they have no arms and legs. That's Max Rebo and his brother. They have, they have no arms. They just have legs. Yeah, and he's just kind of sitting on a speeder. Yeah. That's I, a that's a pretty cool. Um, it's a cool picture. Yeah, that is sweet. But I, I don't understand. Um. So yeah, that that got me thinking. I wonder if like the action figure made it canon. Maybe. You know I what I mean. Know. But the action figure has arms, right? Yeah, arms and legs. Yeah. So what are they do? What are they doing over there at IDW? I don't know. Um. And what does this have to do with Star Wars Resistance? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> but you know something? Let's get on to uh let's let's go let's get on to Niku a little bit here. Mm. Okay? I feel bad for Niku. He's treated kind of, he's kinda of like Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. He's so literal. Mm. But like everyone seems to like kind of like uh crap on him a little bit. You know, they treat him like trash. Yeah. It's it's not cool. You know, because the guy is like innocent, he has the best intentions. He does have the best intentions. Yeah, you, you don't need to treat him like, like he's that. like buying people stuff. I know. Like, but Kaz is like, I wish I knew more about the first order. And he walks up to him. He's like, Hey, just want to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, really fearless. Super cool. Um, speaking of the first order, first order finally made their appearance in the series. Right. Like, this is the whole reason Kaz is there to learn more about the first order, find out the mole for the first order. All of a sudden, they waltz right in. And Kaz totally botches his spy mission and just ends up in a, a shootout with him. Like, not great, but whatever. Um, I'm glad to see them finally taking a role here. Mm-hmm. They didn't do much. <laughs> I mean, really. Well, I, they, they kind of act like the mafia a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was that episode was basically introducing the uh, the gold uh, commander there. No, no, this is the red one, Von Reich. The gold ones to come. Oh, oh, next oh. episodes. Yeah. Well, we already saw we saw the red one a yeah. couple of times now. This is, yeah, Von Rigg was uh, in the first episode, of the recruit. Yeah, in the shootout. Yeah. So, this is uh this is the first time we've really kind of heard him talk and like engage. But it's funny they act like the mafia out there in the other room. They're basically just like uh, trying to shake people down for security, i.e., money, so they don't mm-hmm. destroy the place themselves. Uh, and that's kind of how they're operating. It's, it's it's less like a government that get, that they're gonna take over, more like, you know, just you know, just just shakedowns, yeah. criminal, criminal that, empire. I got the same feel feel yeah, of that. It's weird. Um, let's see. Two more things here. Um, is BB-8 the one who you think really has the mission, kind of like R two D two? Right. Yeah. He. I mean, he's always there. He's kind of like overseeing stuff. And yeah, you know, I wonder. I wonder. And like Kaz is really his cover. Right. It kind of, you know, I know Kaz thinks the other way around, but maybe it's BB kind of putting everything together. Yeah. Running like Inspector Gadget almost, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. Boom. I mean, but, uh, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Penny's like, the one like, really solving the case. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> like we talked about before, like, you know, Kaz isn't the best, uh, like, spy yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, He's botching everything. Yeah. He, he kind of needs some help. <laughs> you know, so, he does. Yeah. Or just let BB do it. Right. I, I, so I don't know. Um, the last thing is hype phase on. Mm. I like him. Yeah. Yeah. Rodian, you know, Rodian. Um, he's cool. He is cool. I mean, apparently he's uh, the best pilot on uh, that station. Hates the first order. Yeah. Hates him big time. So uh, it, it's cool to see. I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of this character. Um, interesting that he and Tam were, were quote unquote friends. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, there's more there, you know. I hope. I hope that. I, I wonder what that's going to lead to for Kaz and like how that relationship deepens between you know the misfits and and hype and uh, if he's going to be like the entrance into the the high tower more and more. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Interesting. You know. Uh. For all his uh kind of boastfulness, he seems like he's kind of a pretty cool guy. Yeah, he does seem um like he's pretty sweet. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like you said. I, it, it, it was really interesting that they waited. Because what, what episode is this? Like, uh, like five or six or something. It's like, like that? the fourth. Fourth. Yeah. I, it's weird because like all the because they're all like well known, you know, actors. Yeah. You know, and uh, how they they waited. I don't know. I, I just thought like right off the gate, it was just like because when all these voice act well, 
actors that are providing the voices for these characters when they were announced. I was like, oh wow, they got like some pretty like you know yeah known people. Definitely. And I just thought they were going to be in it right off the gates. So with this episode, seeing um, Hype Phase on, you know, emerge here, yeah. uh, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, no Yeager in this episode. No Yeager at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Bobby Moynihan. His characters have no been nowhere to be found. Yeah, I mean, he was in it like one episode so far. <laughs> yeah, I think two. That's two. it. But like, that's funny, right? Well, that's what I'm talking about. It's like you, you have some pretty known actors. There. Bobby Bobby Moynihan does, does the cast of Star Wars Resistance for like essentially a cameo part. Right. Yeah, so I don't know. Um This show this show's interesting. You know, um it's kind of eluding me in a lot of points. I'm I'm trying to make a lot more sense of like where it's going and what what what's about to happen in the show. I'm I'm I want to I want to I just wish that, I, I wish there was a little more meat on the bones right now. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we're gonna keep on tracking and see how it goes, and uh, I I can't wait to keep on following it. Right. Right. I mean I very much enjoy watching it. Yeah. It's just like what you it's said. Beautiful. Like, I, I don't I don't know what's going on basically but i enjoy watching it yeah exactly and like, i'm sure I'm, that there's a master plan we just have to wait for it to unfold i really hope so i, I can't wait for more more meat on the bones on mm-hmm. this one and I, I guess that's the only way i'm gonna say it like uh, until the, the still the plot thickens a little bit and like we get a little more development of the characters and the plot it's gonna be kind of a wait and see like okay interesting interesting right. 22 minutes in the star wars universe but let's see where it's going um So good stuff. Just keep it coming. From the galaxy far away, it's Bruce and Blasters, Rebel Scum and IPAs. Bruce and Blasters, Sith and Jedi agree. It's the only podcast that you need. Tell your droids to do. Time. You guys ready to shred some action figure packaging? And there's a lot too. We get a lot because we're going through a whole wave here, mm-hmm. guys. We got a wave in the mail. Patty cake, patty cake, <laughs> baker's <laughs> man. It's been fun. Um, so let's get to it. But before we do, we've been holding on this one for a while, and we need to give a shout out. We've been remiss. Um, a couple of months ago, Ed had set us, sent us in um, this awesome. Power of the Force uh, Kellogg mail away figure mm-hmm. for um, a Han Solo in Stormtrooper armor. Yeah. And it's super cool. And uh, it, it's it's still in the packaging. Yeah, it's still in the little baggie. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think we're, we're going to keep this one in the beat lab for now. Yeah. You know? And just really cool. Great, great message he sent along with it. Thanks for all your hard work, guys, and giving us great upbeat shows. And, uh, I'm just so glad that you guys reached out. What what a nice gesture. Yeah, that was, like, super nice. This happened over the just, summer while we were on hiatus. Yeah. yeah uh, like, baby, baby hiatus. Yeah, that was, like, two months. Yeah, it's been a while. So I wanted to give a shout-out. I wanted to make sure we recognize this because um, it was really, really kind and really, really cool. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so adorning the Beat Lab uh, forever shall be enshrined here along with uh, the, other, the other overwhelming gifts we've been given. Mm-hmm. Uh, second thing is, you know, I want to talk about the Dengar figure in this uh, series, but I can't open it up because I got to give it away. I got to give it away. Give it away now. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. It's a contest, guys. You want the Dengar figure? You want that one? Well, you got to email us and you got to let us know 
I don't know. What what, what, should, what should I don't know? What, this, this show's becoming like the Ellen show. Yeah. <laughs> just giving things away like crazy. We're just giving things away like crazy, Chris. We're just giving it away. That's all. We, we don't care. Mm. We don't care anymore. We're renegades. You know? Want a free Dengar figure? What should, what should we do? Well, how should they win this? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, what's your favorite scene in Solo? Yeah, that's a good one. Tell me. Tell me that. Yeah. And the best one wins Denga. No, nix that. Forget it. Okay, scratch okay. it. Scratch that, guys. Here we go. We're talking cheese. What's Denga's favorite meal? Email us, bruisingblasters at retrozap.com. I want to know. What is what does the slob like to eat? We're talking dinner. Uh, we're, we're talking food and drink. We're talking food and drink. Yeah, exactly. What is this? What is a slob? <laughs> they literally, the, the back of the packaging says crude and slovenly. Dengar was nonetheless an effective b- bounty hunter. While some hunters prided themselves on finesse and style, Dengar preferred firepower and destruction. He's lazy. He's fat. He's all messed up. And he don't care. He don't care at all. He'll just, he just smashes. So that that's actually a good one. So yeah. let us know what you think Dengar drinks and eats. What's his favorite meal? Yeah. What does he eat? We want to know. Bruise and blast at retrozap.com. You send in the best entry, you win the Dengar feed, uh, figure. But you have to do it. You have to do it in a timely manner. You have to do it before November 23rd. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's it. You want to win the Dengar figure? This is how it, this is how it gets done. You know, let's get to work, guys. So That's a good write, one. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Write it up. I want to read them. I want to read the. We're going to read all the entries on the air. We're going we're gonna to have a good time with this mm-hmm. one. You know? Get creative. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people say, people say that's awesome. You get a contest going on. You want to win a figure? That's great. How about two figures? A second one? Whoa. I got a second one here. Oh, my goodness. You ever hear of a character called Han Solo? I, I have heard of him, yeah. Really? Well, how about Han Solo from Empire Strikes Back on Bespin? That's a killer looking figure. Uh, I have this figure loose, and it's the best Han Solo figure I have in my Black Series collection. And I have a few. Uh, it looks unbelievable. The the vest is is and jacket is so cool. Um, the face is amazing. The face is Harrison Ford. They finally got that facial scanning technology down, and we finally have an amazing Harrison Ford figure. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. The DL44 is painted. I mean, come on. Come on now. I know. Th- there's a lot of nice weathering on the uh, the holster. Yeah. Um, it's just overall really nice. It really is. It absolutely is. Um, I want to win this figure. I want you to, to email us. Uh, no, don't email us on this one. <laughs> you need to find us on Twitter mm-hmm. at Bruise and Blaster. And I want you to tell us. A time you have tried to mimic Han Solo's swagger, style, or outfit. That's a good one. That's a good one. I think we all kind of have it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the way you wear your belt sometimes. Whether it's uh, kind of the way you sit at a bar. Whether it's, uh, you know, maybe the way you try and uh, impress the ladies. Or men. Whatever you you prefer. Whether it's the way you comb your hair, you know. Smirk you give. I think we all have a little Han Solo in us. Absolutely, we do. I think I think we do. If you if you love Star Wars, I feel like we all we all have a little bit. Yeah. I want to hear your story. At Bruise and Blaster, let us know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a, those are two yeah. solid ones. Like yeah. they, I mean, we're pretty yeah. excited about this. I like this. Yeah. Hash, should we do a hashtag with that? We're getting pretty cranked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Han Solo <laughs> inside me. <laughs> Hashtag Han Solo, the Han Solo inside me. Is it is it too long? Maybe it's a little too long. Okay. Um, Hashtag I'm like Han Solo. I'm Solo. Hashtag Has- I'm Solo. Hashtag I'm Solo. Okay, yeah, they, let's there do we that. go. Yeah, they, because that's easy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's it's only it, there's a character count. You're right. There's a character <laughs> count. Okay. Uh, hashtag uh, I'm I'm Solo and let us know. Uh, a time you have emulated uh, the swagger, the style, or the outfit and look of Han Solo. There's some major like brain power happening here. Yeah, think, 
think, guys. If you think well, you might win a Black Series figure. Mint in box. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's, there's more. more. We're shredding figures. <laughs> Let the games begin. First up, Val okay. from Vandor. We're doing it. Uh, what does the package say? <laughs> Unknown's nonsense and occasionally prickly woman who is a crack shot with a blaster rifle. Val may be the most even-headed and capable member of Tobias, Be Tobias Beckett's ragtag crew scoundrels. True. Uh, great picture of Tandy Newton on the box, and uh, even better one on the figure. So let's take a look. Okay, here we go. And it's destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look at this gun. They painted the gun. Huh? Yeah, that, it does look nice. And Listen I know that you me. really love that. That's a new Star Wars gun, you know? Yeah, that is a new one. You know, I was opening up uh, Black Series figures over the weekend mm -hmm. after the baby had gone to bed. And I got to tell you, the the cardboard isn't bad. It's that plastic that makes noise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really is. When, when the baby's in bed. I got to tell you, this fi this figure, we come a long way from 2016 with uh, the doll-looking figures that were being produced then. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to figure Candy. out with that uh, like, figure is the translucent red hose. It's amazing. Like, well, like, what is it, though? It's like a, a rubbery plastic. No, no, no. I mean, like, like, what purpose does it serve? Like, what, like, what is it? Oh yeah, I don't know. Maybe heat. I, I, that's what I was thinking. Like, is is it like a heat source or maybe it's heat? Maybe it's power. Maybe it's uh, I don't know. Maybe it's cool. Yeah, it looks awesome. I really like that. It's like a translucent, and it looks like it attaches to that like little backpack thing. Yeah, and like it like uh, the translucent kind of glows. I've never really done that before. No. Um, it looks just like Tandy Noon. Mm -hmm. um, the hairstyle's perfect. Like, you know? Yeah. It, it's really, like, this is a great figure. She has, like, two metal fingers on, on her glove. Mm -hmm. Like, how's she standing? She's standing perfect. They, you know, they've really got the weight down, too. They've really balanced these figures. Wow. Even her hair has, like, a shine to it. Like, it, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've, you know, the skin is more of a matte and the, the hair has a shine. Like, these are closer these days to to statues, yes. posable statues, than they are anything that could be considered toys anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, I mean, you, you want something to remember this character from the film by? This is a, this is unbelievable. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The vinyl cape action, there's... There's ropes, there's translucence. Uh, I mean, there's so many elements going on right now with this figure. You know, the um, the goggles are glued on, but even as they're glued, there is translucence on them. Yeah, like through the lens. I um, yeah. It's funny because when I took that one out of the package, that was the first thing I was like, "Do those goggles come up?" And I'm like, "Oh, they glued." Yeah, they glued, but. Still. But it was all molded separately pieces, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's too bad they, didn't, they should have get, put a Viper droid with her. That would have been cool. Oh, that would have been cool. All right, next one. We're still in Solo, Imperial Patrol Trooper. As the Empire reinforces its hold on the world across the galaxy, local defense forces are being supplemented and eventually completely replaced with Imperial Stormtroopers. To cover distances across sprawling settlements and cities, patrol stormtroopers police the streets and alleys aboard swift interceptor speeder bikes well that's great because these guys lasted all of like half a second in the yeah. film they didn't uh, they didn't last long solo took care of them it would have been cool to see them a, a little bit longer because They're after cool. really looking at this figure the design is awesome the design is beautiful uh they didn't have much to do with them because Oh, I, I saw them flying and pummeling to their death more than I did right. them on the uh, the bikes themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that, it's a tiny gun, but it's a nice looking one. Yeah, it's like a scout trooper type it, deal. It's very much like that, but a little bit modified, a little thicker. Mm -hmm. um, there's a scope on it. Let's see, does it go? Does it go in? No, oh, it, it does. It looks like look at that. Looks like there's a baton. Yeah, and, and too. It, it comes out. It dies, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Um, he kind of has a scout trooper like undergarment 
and the uh, the lighter the lighter armor of a scout trooper as well. Mm -hmm. But that's funny. That's his pinstripe on his pants. <laughs> his pinstripe just like Chips Patrol. Remember that show? Yeah. Oh yeah. Chips. Chips? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's exactly. I used to love that as a kid. Uh, it's really cool. He kind of he definitely looks like a uh, like a bike cop. Yeah. Like a like a motorcycle cop. Like he's gonna give you a ticket. Yeah, he's writing you up for a ticket no matter what you you, you say. You can't get out of this. One. And uh, what an awesome riff on the original stormtrooper helmet. Yeah, it 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 really came out cool. It has the extra visor that you get on the Mimban. Yeah, but there's also this like black paint around it too. It just makes it look so much more like a uh, like a bike like a bike helmet. Yeah, and uh, it's pretty cool. They could have easily just done a uh, man. That was that was a hard elbow joint to kind of turn right there, but I got it. Um, they could have easily just done like a, a, a scout trooper, but they 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 did something totally different. I think it adds so much more of a dimension to give him that bike that that motorcycle cop look. Right. You know. Um, it awesome. does scream uh, authority. It authority. Authority. Yeah. Even so, even though you didn't even get to muster any. Because he was just literally just flying. Yeah, he off was his like, bike. "Hey, come back! I need to give you a ticket." Dead, yeah, dead, and uh, so it was on his way. Or badly hurt, whatever. Whatever. All right, um, let's keep with solo for for a bit here, or should we save this one? We should save it for the last. The, the, that's the bell of the ball right there. <laughs> All right, then we'll we'll stick. We'll do another solo. We have we have one more. This is a, a solo heavyweight, but it's not so bad. Here we go. L337. Now, when they made IG-88, I thought they made an intricate droid six-inch figure. Right. Uh, this is taking things to the next level. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Yeah. A self-made droid built from astromech and protocol parts, L337 is an enlightened navigator who cares deeply about droid rights. Pretty cool. Self-made. Self made. You don't see about. that. You don't see that a lot. Handmade quality stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. And making yourself. Mm. Really. Forming. A lot of uh, a lot of intelligence going on there. There we go. Packaging isn't isn't much different. No accessories. No yeah, there's she, nothing. What she you is, see is what the, you get. She is the accessory. Uh also no uh no no holes for a stand either at the bottom there. The feet move. That's a good pickup. I didn't notice that. The feet move, though. But, but you are like the stand guy. Hey, guys, I uh, I need your help. I need to find the best resource you know of, the best way, the best stand you have for Black Series figures. Let me know. I want to know. Um, I wonder if you can drill it. Uh, like, you know, just put like a little, you know, it, don't go deep. Just, uh, just enough for a yeah. peg. You know, it's funny, even moving these legs, I feel like I, I feel worried to break the wires. There's so many loose wires on it. Yeah. Um, It looks like there's loose wires on the torso, but there's really not. It's funny. Like, that doesn't move, you know? Mm. That's very smart design there. Um, Same thing around the elbows. There is loose wires there. I feel like I could break them easily. But this is a gorgeous looking figure. So much detail went into it. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of nice stuff there, and uh, like the legs, they're like on a, a like a pivot. So the, yeah, like they the actually legs move. Go, they go. Um, oh, look at that! You can actually bend them out too. Right, exactly. That actually helps. I wonder if they did that with IG88, that would actually have helped quite a bit to mm. to balance that. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, it's that's a, a that's a solid solid figure, dude. I am. Um, I, I that one got right by me. The, What's uh, that? The the peg. The holes. Oh yeah. On the bottom of the feet. Yeah, she doesn't have them. No, no, no peg. Um, so that's not that's the only real look criticism I have, because those pegs do come in handy trying to balance things when you have yeah. a, a whole. I mean, table full of them. She does stand well. She does. I like it. Good figure. Nice, you know, nice weathering, and yeah. like you, like you said, all these wires. Made the detail like is a, beautiful. They're, they're nice and soft. They, they could have easily, the they, they could have put that, they could have made that all plastic. Oh, and yeah, just, had just a, painted it or yeah, whatever, exactly. you know? But, I mean, having the actual wire there 
really gives it so much more realism mm -hmm. that it's you know she is who she is um yeah really nice really nice work at this i want to get her in that picture of her like with her like hands up like leading to victory oh yeah you know victory 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 exactly something like that i don't know okay okay next up now I have uh this will be my third Black Series Lando. Uh, third? Yeah, I have the one from Empire. Then yeah. I have the one from Solo. Uh, uh, this gotcha. one. Yeah. Gotcha. This is this is uh Skiffguard Lando. Once a smooth talking smuggler, Lando changed from get rich quick schemer to a selfless leader in the fight against the Empire. When his old friend Han was held captive in the palace of Jabba the Hutt, Lando joined Princess Leia in a mission to rescue him from a certain demise. There we go. And the skiff guard unit. Now, this is technically also a solo figure because this this costume was used by Beckett in Solo. How many people do you think took that helmet and put it on the Beckett figure? No one, but it's awesome. What a great idea. What a, or, or better yet, swap the head out with Beckett's head. That's actually a better idea. Yeah. That's really cool. That's that's a lot better idea. That's be, that could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Because he uses this whole outfit. Yes. I wonder the origins of how. I know. I know. Like Lando how... got this guard outfit. Yeah. Did he buy it? Did he kill a guy? Like, well, what happened? Because other people on Jabba's barge were using it, right? Uh. Um... They like like other people had this similar outfit. Well, they had similar things with like the teeth, you know, yeah. like in the front of the mask there. Interesting. Um. Another figure to use the facial scanning technique, mm -hmm. which is just standard now. Uh, it looks just... It, this is the most accurate Billy D. Williams depiction it's, I have seen. It's perfect. It's perfect. What do we have here? Hello, what do we have here? And my God, this this is the mo a very intricate mm -hmm. costume, um, which I think why they held off so long. You know because, it, I mean, it's some real armor here. It was a cool surprise, too, because when they, uh, you know, showed those, that, you know, the pictures of this figure, I was like, wow, I, I didn't see that coming, and I'm happy that it got made. Yeah. I mean, my, this is it's, it's one of the coolest uh, costumes in the entire OT, and it's, it's, it's just really cool. It's funny, too, because, the, the, you know, the, the mask is, like, kind of soft, mm -hmm. so you can literally have him pull it down and expose his entire face, just like he does. Yeah. Like, no, you idiot, they'll see you. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's Lando. Oh, hey, Lando. What are you doing over there? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. And um, uh, This isn't Lando. I, I can't wait to, you know, pose him next to Gamorrean gods and stuff. Oh, my gosh. You're right. You're right. Um, Yeah, that's going to be fun. We need more... We need more of Jabba's like whole court on in Black Series. Well, we are getting a a, a clack two, right? If we're getting clack two, I want um I want the Max Rebo band. Oh hell yeah! In that Black would be Series, amazing. come on. Yeah, make a three pack. You know, take take my sixty bucks. Yeah. So you'll probably make it eighty. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Um, take my money. My figure, and I don't know if this is every figure, but the, the torso is a little loose on mine. Yeah. Um, not loving that, but you know, maybe it's just a specific, you know, individual figure that that's happened to. Yeah. Sometimes you just get a loose figure. You never know. You never know what happens in production. It's loose. I was going to say, like, that's a little, like, it's loose. looser than it should be. Yeah. Like, that's pretty damn loose. Yeah, what are you going to do? Sometimes you just get a loose a loose torso figure. Yeah, but, you know, th there's a lot of tricks out there. Like, a lot of people say when you have a, a loose joint, you know, you get a little bit of nail polish yeah, or whatever. you put and, that in there. And then, bingo, bango, you're done. You're done. Touchdown. Well, oh, you, touchdown. You just killed Lando. I want to kill this packaging. We got, uh, we got Bespin. Not Bespin. Hoth or Hoth. <laughs> Princess Leia here. That's it. However... This figure is exactly the same as the best from Princess Leia, with the exception of the accessories she comes with. And, um, and the hair is a little different. Is the hair different? Yeah, she has her hair in, like, tight oh, braids. Oh, the braids. You're right. It is a different and then head they're, uh, they're, like, looped braids. Well, would you look at that? I didn't even notice that. The gun is the same. Nice painted uh, rifle there. Well, Joe, uh, 
you know, we're here, guys. You yeah, know? it's true. Yeah, we have so much hair. Um, oh, look, look at it on the floor here. We just have like black series like things. It's amazing. Yeah, the body is exactly the same, with the exception of the of the vest. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I gotta say, on the Bestman layer that I have at home, and this one, this is Carrie Fisher. Yeah, that that photoreal face deco on that figure is the the pretty, best I've ever seen. Pretty stunning. Yeah, really is. This is the best Carrie Fisher like figure I've ever seen, mm-hmm. and. and if- if you don't take it out of the package, you're not getting the full effect here either. Yeah, and if you want to remove that vest, you definitely can. You can, yeah. You'll you'll have you'll have bestman layer with the wrong haircut, basically. The um the goggles fit good. The little welding tool fits good. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Oh, this looks just like she did on on Hoth. Yeah. It it this is cool. Even the color of the vest, like on that the off then. that off white. Cream color, yeah, perfect. This is a great figure. I'm, I'm really happy with this. You know what they need to do with this facial, rec- this facial scanning technology? They need to make more Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker figures. Well, they, they are with the archives, the X-wing pilot, Luke. That's great, X-wing pilot. I want. You know what they haven't touched? They haven't touched Hoth, Luke, at all. Well, they, they did with um, like the older Black series. Oh, you're right. They because did. He, My he, gosh. He, he the comes 2013 with the, uh, with, the the, Wampa. with the Wampa. Yeah, they need to redo that too. They need to re-release that. Yeah. It's time. We need we need much more much more Luke. Yeah, I I have a. It's all uphill from here. Oh yeah, I'm really excited about the Black Series line right now. Yeah, it's really looking good. And now we get to the bell of the ball. The bell of the ball. You know who we're talking about? Four arms. Pilot has legs. Monkey. <laughs> Rio Durant. Oh, baby, oh, baby. Here we go. Patty cake, patty cake. Baker's man. <laughs> Here we go. I think the tape. Give me the monkey man. I think the tape is stronger this they time have, around. They, yeah, maybe I'm just weaker. No, 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 dude, keto. because I, I was uh, running into the same problem. Oop. And oh, the gun is down there. Well, the goggles are removable. Look at that. Who knew? Who would have thunk it? Man, he looks like a really old man when you take off the goggles, huh? I like how um, soft his head looks. It does. It, it looks soft. He's an old man. He's not a young guy. He looks like he has some age on him. He's definitely seen some stuff. You know what I mean? The miles. Yeah. He doesn't. He looks weird with the goggles on, though. Yeah. He never really wears the goggles. Rest them on his forehead. Yeah. That's true. Man, this is a cool figure. Look at the detail. It's insane. Look at the detail on this thing. My goodness. Um, Fully. I mean, we're talking full articulation. And he has a gun in a holster. Yeah. So he comes with two guns. Two guns there. This is a weird looking Star Wars gun. I got to be honest. And uh, oh, yeah. He also comes with four arms. (laughs) Fully articulated. One, two, look at this. I'm just bending the shoulders on all of them. Three, four. My goodness. That's, that, that's a holy moly figure. That's This is this is unbelievable. Unbelievable work, yeah. Like, I didn't think this could be done with a, with a, with, with, a, with an action figure. Right, right. And they did it. Like, I can literally have him shooting behind him. While he's like, you know, doing something else with his front fingers, with his front hands. Yeah, I mean, the arms look so great. You you can have them like, you know, in all different directions. Yeah. Like the two front arms, you know, you can't you can't have them like go right by his side, just because of the way that it's designed. But yeah, like why why would? But yeah, I mean, it's just great. Why would you? You know. And plus, yeah. like, the vest, you know, that's molded separately. There's a lot of things molded separately on that. It's true. Like, the vest is not is not I love glued that, on. The, I, the belt I'm, isn't glued on. I'm loving that there's molded separate pieces. It's because so good. Such I, nice detail. I hate it when it was molded and just painted. Yeah. I mean, look at that. You know? It's sick. So his torso moves, and then there's actually another joint underneath the stomach. So there's two joints. 
Yeah. On he, the upper he has, a, he has a waistline and a torso joint. Yeah. Usually you only get one or the other. I think they did that because usually you have a joint on the upper portion of the leg, like right here. Yeah. He doesn't have that. And I think that's why maybe they did. Ah, I see. It's the only thing I can think of. He's a ball joint at the the waist as well, too. Makes sense. But, man, he... He might be my favorite out of of this wave. I I don't know. He's up there. Yeah, this is a cool, cool figure. The paint app with the transition. Like, look at his feet. Perfect. Look at his face. Like, I don't know. Everything about it rocks. Such care. Such care taken mm-hmm. with this. Like, again, it's a long way from 2016 with, like, Jyn Erso, like, eyes being not done right. Like, just done like, 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 you know, really badly, badly drawn dolls. Mm-hmm. And to this figure, like, like, everything in such beautiful detail and care. Like, look at the pupils of his eyes. I know. It's insane. Like, it, like they glistens. went black on black to glisten. My gosh. Yeah. Like, you can literally see, like, the zipper of his... Look at that. Look at the look at the detail of the zipper on the blue jacket underneath. Oh, right, yeah. There's a zipper they painted. Yeah, it's, there's, like, two different colors, too. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Crazy yeah, detail. The fig is unreal. So... Touchdown. We win. Yeah. Oh, d- we definitely won. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just to recap, guys, you want to win some figures? Dengar. Let us know his favorite his favorite food. And drink. And drink. Let's let's go. Uh email us bruisingblastsretrozap.com. Uh Han Solo Bestman, you want to win him? Let us know. Hashtag I'm solo. Mm-hmm. Let us know uh, y- the, your favorite swagger that you've adopted. Style swagger clothes that you've adopted in, in your real life from Han Solo. Let us know. Bingo, uh, bingo. Yeah, you have a week, guys. Let's go. Oh, guys, yes, we've come to the end again. We yes. still have so much more to talk about, but my goodness, it's it's time to call it a night. We're we're falling asleep and we're freezing to death here. It's just freezing. It's cold, yeah. Yeah, we gotta get we going. Have, we have to fix this. Yeah, we really do. Let's light a fire. We might have to. Campfire tales. Mm. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Campfire campfire brews and blasts. That's what we're doing out in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for listening, guys. You know where to find us. Our official website is bruisingblaster.ninja. If you can hear our voices right now, we want to hear from you. Email us, bruisingblaster at retrozap.com. 978-219-6688 is the voicemail. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear from you. We're part of the RetroZap Podcast Network. Subscribe and get every RetroZap show in one place with the network catch-all feed. Available on all pa- podcast apps, podcast ops, podcast apps. And uh, find us wherever podcasts are found, like Fanta Tracks, Jedi News. Get those latest updates there. Action figure news. Go to Yak Face. And if you're a new listener to Bruising Blaster, we hope you subscribe. Our mid credits theme song is by Luke Schreiber. And if you want to support the show, no money's needed. Just leave an iTunes review. And when you do, send us proof with your mailing address, and you win the coveted Oppo Award. Boom. It's a major award. It is. And while you're at it, High technology here. Look look around. Find a friend. Tell them about the show. Just, just punch a friend in the shoulder and say, hey, listen to Bruise and Blast as they good. If, if you feel that way. And make sure they subscribe. Uh, let's talk about social media right now. This is what you got to do. Smash that like button on Facebook. Smash that like button on Twitter. Smash that like button on Instagram. <laughs> smash, smash all the like buttons. Just smash Ooh. the buttons everywhere you possibly can for Bruise and Blasters. And while you're at it. You want some merch? You want you want to rock it? You want to, you want to have some style? Go to RetroZap.com, click on Merch, and get your own Bruise and Blasted t-shirt. There are new styles available now. And uh, get them while they're hot. Chris, CollectorsHut.com. That's the place to go to look at his reviews. Go to go there and learn everything about Chris Dalton. Hello. Things you might not even want to know. It's unbelievable. It's what all there. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything is all there. All right. Any last words, Chris? Uh... See you later. <laughs> you might want to buckle up, baby. That's a show. Godspeed Rebel suck a lot. Tell the Kanji Club.
Clutch. 